Hey there guys, Matt Guzman here, back with another video, and today's going to be about how to get the Home Repair Merit Badge. <clears throat> so, for the Home Repair Merit Badge, there's a couple things to note. Uh, the requirements do not have to be specifically done on your house, uh, it just, you have to do the tasks for it. And also, either a parent or the Merit Badge Counselor may supervise the Scout's work on any Home Repair's requirements. So, if you are doing it at your house, you're, you don't have to have your counselor there. Just, you know, make sure your parents know what you're doing and then your counselor can sign it off. All right, let's get into it. So, for home repair, I like the merit badge because obviously you can learn how to repair things around the house, kind of like a do-it-yourself type thing. And if you're lucky, you know, you can get with your dad and he'll teach you tools and stuff, bring out his giant toolbox of stuff and he'll show you exactly how to do Maybe you won't get yelled at from holding a flashlight the wrong way because you'll be the one doing the work this time. So home repair is pretty interesting because, you know, it's like you get to do stuff around the house. You get to, like, be useful and stuff. So it's pretty cool. All right. Get, get into the first requirement. One says to do the following. 1A. Explain to your counselor the hazards you may encounter while working on home repairs and what you should do to anticipate, mitigate, prevent, and respond to these hazards. I'm not going to list all of them. But basically, things like tools, uh, falling off ladders, so like heights and stuff, electrical equipment, uh, water damage, basic things like that. Now, obviously, cutting yourself, you know, that's a common common thing. You Like maybe you nick your finger on your nail or you're trying to cut something and you slip. But, you know, if you are familiar with the toad and shit, you're pretty good with that anyway. But harm repair, there's a lot of different factors that can go into what you're repairing. And it can either be really simple or really hard based on how well you prepare, like using the right tools, uh, making sure you have like the right equipment for like a level, something like that. You know, just things that will make it easier because you understand how you're doing it. Uh, it's easier if you have like your dad trying to show you what, you're, what to do because honestly, some of these things I had no idea what I was supposed to be doing and I'm just lucky my dad was there to help me because... I was very clueless. <laughs> so, yeah, if, if you know what you're doing and you understand, like, what tools to use, what equipment to use, it makes it a lot easier. So, one also says, uh, for 1A, describe the appropriate safety gear and clothing that should be used when working on home repairs. Um, this is also code to Boy uh, Scouts BSA as well. Goggles and working gloves. Uh, there's other things, too. Maybe you can have, like, a hard hat if you're doing something like very intense. I don't think any of the requirements are very intense though. Maybe like good shoes, work boots, stuff like that. But the main thing is goggles and some work gloves. Um, I didn't really use work gloves for any of them, but maybe goggles if you're like pounding nails into something or, uh, I don't know, splitting wood for a project. So yeah. 1B says to discuss general precautions related to home repairs. Name at least 10 safe practices that every home repairer should exercise. Um, this is just a couple that I think are really useful. Again, know what equipment you have and what the uses are. But also, when you're doing the requirements, um, another safe practice should be to um, look at your surroundings. Is there something around you that could possibly hurt you or maybe hurt the project you're working on? So be aware of your surroundings. And also, if you are getting help from somebody, make sure the help actually doesn't make it worse because if you're having a simple thing like pounding a nail on a wall it doesn't take like three people to do that maybe one of you can guide the person to pounding a nail on the wall um so yeah just uh make sure you know what you're doing in a reasonable amount of like people are doing on a task and also to watch your surroundings so this is just like a couple things i thought are important all right moving on to number two now this is where the projects start coming there's a lot of them so, under the supervision of your merit badge counselor, or like it said before, your parent, do four of the following. And those four things uh, are given in the options followed. 2A uh, is maintain and or recondition yard tools and show that you know how to clean up and properly store this equipment. Uh, option B, weather strip a window or door, like sealing it. C is to caulk cracks and or joints open to the weather. Uh, D, so, um, actually before I move on, I just want to show examples of things I did. Uh, most of these pictures are actually mine. This one was when I was doing the weather stripping. It kind of seals the window so there aren't any like mold and stuff getting in from the rain. And so it's airtight as well so there's no like draft 
even if the windows close. So those two little strips, I know they're not even because again, I didn't know what I was doing until I put them down and I'm like, huh, those aren't really flush. But you know, it still works. Uh, it's the window is actually sealed and it like, you know, it works like a closed window should. So that's good. Also, I caulked uh, joints and cracks. This is on the side of the pool area. Uh, there's like all these switches there and everything, and there was a huge gap in between where the where the board there split. So you can see where like around a third of the way through that board in the middle, I had to put the caulking down to seal it up. Uh, the other options were to waterproof a basement. I live in Florida. There are no basements in Florida. <laughs> e says to repair breaks in concrete and or an asphalt surface. I also did that one because in my pool area, there was also cracks in the concrete because, you know, weathering, I guess you could say erosion, but, you know, it's really a pool, so. F says to repair the screen in a window or a door. Uh, again, pool area, lots of screenings that needed to be repaired. We just used this adhesive kind of tape that was like, it was a screen, but like as a tape, if that makes sense. It's pretty cool. Like it ad adheres to the broken screen and just kind of acts as a, a uh, it holds the tears together basically. It is basically tape, but it's the screen also. So it just fixes it. Uh, option G says to replace a pane of glass. And option H says to solder a broken wire or a metal object. Now I did want to show my own pictures, but this is the only thing I didn't have a picture for only because when I went to take the picture it was raining very hard and I didn't want to delay the video any longer so I just took these pictures online uh, I took these from like Google Images but it's, it shows the same thing when I put the cement down on the cracks in my pool area so uh, you can use like a spackle or a filling in I use concrete I just had a concrete mix and I just smoothed it into the cracks basically you know filling it in making sure there are no cracks there that's what it would look like and I really wanted to take a picture of it because, you know, it was, it was, it was I don't know, I, I wanted to take a picture, but I couldn't. So that's what it would look like if you, if you fill it in. It makes it so the crack doesn't spread or get bigger, and it just holds the concrete together because concrete can and will crack easily, even though it's concrete. You, you, you'd think it wouldn't crack easily, but it does. So moving on to requirement number three. It says, under the supervision of your merit badge counselor, do three of the following. And those choices are A, install and or build equipment for storing tools. B, says to build a workbench. C, is to repair a piece of furniture. D, is to paint or varnish a piece of furniture, a door or a trim on a house. And E, says to repair a sagging door or gate. F, is to repair a loose step or railing. G, repair a fence. Again, you only need to do three of these. Um, Examples, I was repairing a fence, a lot of the boards were falling off, and we have this like, kind of, I don't know what this is called, I'm just going to call it a cross hitching, because it sounds cool, but it's like this white sort of, I don't know, it's like a design design kind of fence, that was falling off too, just get a few nails and pound it into the existing fence to make sure that things don't start falling apart. Uh, a, also, a good thing to note, if you're putting in nails, you don't really want to hit it at an angle, because it can bend the nail. So hit it straight on, you know, just get the nail in there. So, yeah. Another thing I did, uh, I installed a desk in my, well, me and my brother, we both installed, in, me and my brother both installed a desk in his room. It's called a hinged desk to where it can go down if you need space to, like, do stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, this picture is kind of weird. I had to put the flash on so you could see the hinges, but at least you, you can see it. So the, those clamps go up and then the desk goes down. I would have taken a picture of the desk down, but I didn't want to move all his stuff there because it's not my room. But that's what it looks like. It's pretty cool. Uh, another tip, if you're putting things into a wall, make sure you actually know what you're doing because I don't think if you can see it, but if you do notice it, there's obviously two holes there. Uh, we drilled in the wrong space, so the, the fillings that we were putting for the nails it kept falling through the wall because we did it wrong. So just make sure you know what you're doing if you're pounding stuff in a wall because you don't want it to look stupid. And if you mess up, it's already put you already put a hole in the wall. So, you know, just make sure you understand what you're doing before you actually do it. Like I said before, understand the equipment you're using and make sure what task you're doing, you know exactly. Well, not exactly, but you know, you you know how to complete that task. Again, if you need help, just ask someone like your counselor or your parents. Someone that can help you out if you're stuck. 
Uh, moving on, number four says, under the supervision of your merit badge counselor, do two of the following. And these choices are, A, locate a main electrical switch box and know how to replace a fuse and reset the circuit breaker. B, says to replace an electrical cord or repair a plug or lamp socket. C, says to install a single pole light switch. And D, says to replace an electrical wall outlet. So this picture is outside of my house. There was like an outlet here. We never really use it, so we were gonna replace it, but that's what it looks like for if you're gonna like replace a wall out outlet. Very, very important thing to note. Do not electrocute yourself. Make sure if you're dealing with stuff like this where you have open wires and stuff that you actually have the electricity off in that area so it's safe to touch it because if you touch that and it's live, that's not gonna end well. So e electricity is very dangerous. Uh, this is something you should probably know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, definitely ask someone because, you know, it's easy to get shocked and possibly electrocuted. So, especially if it's like an open area like this where you have wires out, that can be very dangerous. So, uh, that's why we had the first couple requirements where you knew the safety hazards and safety precautions, you know. Uh, also, this is the picture of one that we replaced already. You can see, like, the parts down there. Uh, that uh, that socket that we have is actually a special one. It has like a nightlight, which is pretty cool. But uh, the, you can see the parts there where you have the nails and the actual socket itself. Uh, that's just what the socket looks like. I thought it was cool to take a picture of that. Uh, requirement number five says, under the supervision of your merit badge counselor, again, do two of the following. And these choices are clear a clogged drain or trap, B, repair a leaky water faucet, C, repair a flush toilet, which I did that with my brother, and I, like like I said in the beginning, some of this stuff I had no idea what I was doing. It took us freaking three hours just to switch out like like the flush part of the toilet. Not even the toilet, it was just the flushing mechanism. It took us three hours because we didn't know what we were doing. And we even had instructions too. So that's another good point. If you have instructions, read them because you don't want to spend a long time working on a task that you can just easily get done if you just planned ahead and understood what you were doing. Uh, option D says to repair a leaky hose or connector. Option E, clean or replace a sprinkler head. Uh, six says under the supervision of your merit badge counselor, do three of the following. And these options are A, paint a wall or ceiling. B, repair or replace a damaged tile, linoleum or vinyl flooring. C says to install drapery or curtain rods and then hang drapes or curtains. Uh, and the other option is D, replace a window blind cords. Uh, e, replace or repair a window sash cord. F, reinforce a picture frame. G, mend an object made of china, glass, or pottery. So this is kind of a funny story. Here is a cup that my mom had and it's very fancy, very nice looking. When I was doing the personal fitness merit badge, you have to do stretches and stuff, you know, show your progress for things. One time I came back from a run and was doing my stretches and I lost my balance. Usually when I lose my balance, I'm able to catch it easily, but I just came back from my run, so I misplaced my footing, rolled my ankle, fell back into the bench, the bench hit the wall, and then the wall shook and hit the cup and the cup fell down and hit the concrete and everything just went wrong and the cup broke. And I felt really bad, so I told my mom, I'm like, you know what, I'll fix this. I'm doing the home repair merit badge. I know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. That's what, <laughs> that was my attempt to repair the cup. Um, yep. But, you know, it's still kind of for the requirement, so that was that. I didn't want to mess with it anymore. Make sure if you're using glue, you know how to use the glue. I didn't even know it expanded that much, like... I, I felt so proud of myself. I put all the pieces back together, and I'm like, look at me. And then I looked at it the next day, and I'm like, huh? <laughs> what? So, again, that tip I said, make sure you understand what you're actually using and what it does. So, yep. Thank you for watching my video on how to get the home repair merit badge. If you did enjoy, please like the video, turn on notifications on my channel, and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.